Okay, welcome everyone. Last couple of videos we've been talking about organic reactions. And in summary, we notice the ionic reactions have an obvious um, Lewis base. Then the Lewis acid consists of two parts in general, not always, but in general. The part that has a partial charges at least, positively, that's normally hydrogen and carbon. Then there's another part that can accommodate electron well using electron affinity through the size or uh, resonance. Then when the base is donating electron to the either hydrogen or carbon, you're losing the leaving group and you replace the leaving group with the Lewis base. So this ball would have been hydrogen or carbon, then your uh, leaving group is a stable conjugate base. When the conjugate base is more stable than Lewis base, then it's ex exothermic. So, for example, when the base was OH and the leaving group was a chlorine, then you're generating chloride as um, Lewis base, the conjugate base as a product, which is L, then you're forming the Lewis base bonded to either hydrogen and carbon. Then I said the um, the bond dissociation energy difference between this and this is within um, 10 plus minus kilocalories but the uh, electron affinity for different size was much greater. It could have been 60 or greater kilocalorie. If you had uh, instead of HCl, we talked about the um, system with the resonance acetate case with the same base. The energy to begin with was a little uh, higher, but that m maybe is very close. However, the product, the acetate that has a resonance increasing the um, electron affinity of oxygen through the resonance making the reaction still exothermic but not as much as the chlorine case. When the carbon was the target then there was complication due to the attached group. You may not be able to attack this um, acidic partial positive carbon although it has a potential to lose the stable leaving group. So it all depends on the, um, the side groups of carbon. That's something we have to discuss in detail. If that be becomes very difficult by some uh, degree, then you have this hydrogen over here on the next carbon. We call this one alpha because it, it's directly to the leaving group. The next one is called the beta carbon. So the hydrogen on the beta carbon is called the beta hydrogen. You can attack there, then you generate double bond, and you break that off. And you're creating double bonded compound with the leaving group kicked out. Then Lewis base, you know, this is within this um, carbon structure. Then you are creating Lewis base, attack the hydrogen. So creating three pieces making the uh, entropy increased while in this case the entropy is roughly around the zero plus minus few kilocalories. So like I said the, uh, the leaving group is the same. Then the energy involved in forming these two is about the same. You know, the bond formation between, um, say, Lewis base was oxygen OH to the carbon is roughly 80. And the breaking this uh, li leaving group off is also roughly 80 or little less. So, um, 
this could have been just around um, you know heat of formation uh, could have been just around a few kilocalorie more stable than the reactant if you only consider the bond dissociation energy but that's not the case like we said the Lewis space is mostly unstable more than a living group so I said you have to consider um, electron affinity of the uh, living group more than bond dissociation energy however when you compare just the bond dissociation energy uh, to the double bond formation uh, case when you have a H attack so the oxygen bound to the hydrogen is normally uh, around 110 and the double bond is roughly 60 so that's around 170 plus minus then you're breaking CH bond which is roughly 100 and that's around 70 something to 80 so it's around zero ish so to form a double bond around zero to form a replacement with a single bond it's also you know plus minus negative something so they are within like a 10 kilocalorie or less range so their product is about the same anyway so I said the uh, steric is important to determine which will be the actual reaction so where the steric plays the role that's when you have a transition state so when the base approach the acid either carbon or hydrogen to kick out the stable uh, leaving group holding electron extra electron from the uh, unstable base this or this is determined by how sterically hinder for these carbon chains versus uh, and the uh, structure in the Lewis space that's compared to the wide open hydrogen nothing is blocking attack on the hydrogen so that's something we will always think about so if I re-show you this case where the living will make the difference it is like with the same base loose base and the same uh, reactant number of carbons here in the living group and you create the product say um, you know living group is more stable than this guy then you have exothermic product so leaving group R sorry loose space and the R then kicked out the living group if the living group was not as stable as the uh, loose space then you have an endothermic situation so if unstable if stable more stable than uh, Lewis space how do you know well we talked about three factors so far how do you know something is more stable and it's negative well you think about size in terms of electronegative electron affinity so size make the negative more stable bigger size to resonance these to make electron affinity greater and more stable for the negative ions even when this was negative then you think about the electronegativity to attract electron better so that's the case if you change the leaving group you can change the energy up or down if you raise the product energy with the poor leaving group you know according to the Hammond postulate the transition state comes a little more later compared to the better leaving group that comes lower and the earlier transition state what's the meaning of it when you have the blue ball as a carbon target and say there was a leaving group then for the better leaving group 
you don't have to have this lone pair of the uh, oxygen with the uh, one methyl group approach too much say just hypothetically around here the leaving group already start to go then steric hindrance between these electron pairs between these two molecules are not as much as the case where you have a late transitional state late transitional state is when you have to bring these two pretty close to push the electron from this lone pair to the carbon over here the blue ball so you can move a lot a portion of the electron to the reluctant leaving group so you can break bond and go then you, you cause a lot of repulsion so for the late transition state you have a higher activation energy like here So when you have these two reactions competing, just simply kicking out when the carbon is wide open or the hydrogen case, there's no steric, so it's always wide open, right? If the carbon is the case, you have a complication with a double bonded. When this is drived away from the carbon center with a steric, then it will attack the beta hydrogen. Then there's no steric. Both cases you generate relatively same amount, same uh, energy um, uh, product mixture, roughly speaking. So it's going to be something like this. Same reactant, about same product, but without steric. Slightly, you see the slightly double bond product is less stable due to the pi. Also, I said earlier, if you use the actual number, couple kilocalorie, this is a higher energy than, this combination is a higher energy than these all single bond lone pair case. So, um, this is the elimination, the, uh, sorry, the double bond case. This was the replacement case, okay? So, this was a number one case, number two case. So, number two case is slightly less stable than number one by few kilocalorie. Then you can see the according to the Hammond postulate, your activation energy. This is a much earlier transition uh, and somewhat lower activation energy case. But for this one, you expect a little higher activation and a little later um, transitional state from the same reactant combination. But uh, Without changing much about the uh, product stability, by putting on some carbon numbers around the central carbon, you can actually make the number one case, the sub replacement case. You know, just the heating on and then kick that out. You know, this ball is this carbon uh, with a few chains. That can be increased depends on how many carbons you have. If you have one more carbon, the increase can be as much as more than 10 kilocalorie. If you have a more carbon, one more instead of hydrogen, one more carbon, that can be increased by that much as well. So, um, the impact is only on number one case you know hitting kick out that case not hitting on the hydrogen double bond kick out not that case which is number two so suddenly with about the same stability or even more st stable product formation it has higher activation energy by some significant kilocalorie so the reaction becomes much slower so the uh, steric broke the Hammond postulate like we uh, discussed earlier. So the steric could make the double bond formation favorable over the uh, replacement leaving group with the uh, uh, Lewis space. Okay, 
let's revisit our discussion with this central structure. You have organic compound with a carbon. And carbon has at least, say, one carbon with a bunch of hydrogens. They, they, they look eclipsed, so I'm drawing not the best one I know. And these could be anything. I'm not as being so specific yet. Then, like I said, oxygen is not really having O and H attacking, right? So there's a lone pair, two, three, like wedge and dash, and the solid line, and another solid line holding hydrogen or carbon. So if that's the Lewis space, we said the leaving group Using better leaving group, you can create more exothermic reaction, lowering activation energy. But steric can raise it. But what about the base? If the original reaction was like this much exothermic reaction with uh, some decent activation energy, so the reaction is not as fast as you want. What can you do? Well, you can lower the product energy, like we just talked about. Leaving group makes the product more stable, then it will automatically lower the activation energy. So the conjugate base effect of the leaving group. Number one, that's what we did. Number two, you can in fact raise the energy of the reactant then you can make the activation energy less how do you do that? so you know these electrons are um, very unstable but you can imagine something that makes the electron more unstable because we know those factors use a smaller one so you can create more repulsion or you use atom that is less electronegative so it doesn't hold the electron as much then electron becomes you know more unstable so you can think of nitrogen sorry about that one of them is hydrogen NH2 negative with the two lone pairs so nitrogen is a slightly bigger but it's less electronegative so it is more basic if you look up the pKa this, this is at least 10 to the 10 times greater than um, the conjugate acid water so this is much stronger uh, base 10 to the 10 times probably so with this your uh, attack on the carbon will be much faster because this energy of the reactant compared to this is much greater that's another way so either case these two attacks carbon easily unless all these lines are covered and blocked by you know carbons with the uh, attachments so say that some portion of them are attacking carbon, no problem, and making sigma bond with the carbon, and pushing these three lines, you know, electron pairs away from these negative electrons, and also as well, partially, slowly breaking the bond away, eventually completely through the transitional state. Then you have the leaving group left and that happened to be stable more stable than this guy or this guy then the reaction is exothermy remember all of these discussions we just did so CH3 and this and this and you have the one of these two so let me just put this guy and H2 so there you have a product or if this happened to have another carbons and this attack is too difficult and you have to attack the beta hydrogen then I hope you know how to move um, electrons using um, curved arrow, reaction arrow electron pair comes here 
and then the shell was sharing these two electrons so the electrons are pushed away from the shell but this carbon is partially negative so partially positive next to the you know electron negative or you know uh, stable base attracting the electron into the more stable bonding area so you are forming double bond from sp3 carbon by losing this and forming p orbital on hybridized orbital you know there are three so sp2 therefore this dotted line coming back on the paper so it becomes flat sp2 flat remember then you lose this so these two go to the flat as well so you get the double bond so by pushing this away obviously so you get this as well as NH3 plus and in this case instead of carbon you receive the hydrogen because this was a carbon target this was a hydrogen target case the other case here you got the double bonded organic compound formed so these two are hydrogen these two are you know some groups we assumed in order to avoid attack on the carbon and drive the reaction to the hydrogen so something like that we talked about this so you know these cases as you know they are extremely repelled electron hydroxide mi NH2 uh, uh, minus, they are very unstable uh, electrons. So they are strong, very strong base. So you may wonder what if we use weak base? I hinted that. What if we use something very stable, more stable than the leaving group? For example, what if you use methanol or water, something neutral, slight negative charge with the basicity and slight positive charge with a little acidity so this is not gonna able to attack and push out something unstable so unlike these cases with the exothermicity this case you're looking at endothermic case we don't know what's going to happen afterwards question mark we talked about this before so the question is how do you explore up to here when that exotherm endothermy correct so you need to give enough heat energy for kinetic so the molecule no, this neutral molecule and neutral molecule able to drive and collide enough in a way. So as you give heat, everything moves faster. Even internally, vibration and stretchings are happening faster. So if you happen to have, you know, if with a weak base plus heat, plus, there are many conditions, plus, you have a decent to good living group if it's not stable extremely unstable it's not gonna happen it should be decent you know like a chlorine you know um, also your carbon after losing the electron the carbon positive must be somewhat stable so we'll talk about this later soon this as well if all of these conditions met then yeah you can form something by breaking this off because negative will be let me show you over here the negative just go away because it's just stable then by losing it this this part becomes sp2 with a positive charge and the other part is um, ch3 over here and that's stable as well if that's somewhat stable with uh, enough heat the reactant can reach here some portion of the you know reactant there is a formula I'm not gonna uh, discuss with the math 
in this level video. I may uh, make up some C, B level and C level video with uh, some math in it. So if you know the energy gap here, you can calculate how many portion of the reactant can reach here. So you can make up decent amount of the, you know, these intermediate with the charges, the so ionic. Then on, um, you know, the positive charge on the carbon compared to H plus, it's quite um, stable, uh, sorry, quite attractive as well. You know, carbon has plus one formal charge, but second shell of the carbon has a plus four attraction, right? Carbon is more electronegative than the hydrogen even. So this can act as a strong acid like this, even stronger, meaning this weak base is able to give away, you know, slightly unstable electron to this guy. So you can further react this guy. So this can give electron. Second step. Will this carbon have to break some bond? Well, the carbon has only six electrons, so it doesn't have to. It can just accept the electron and keeps going on. Okay? So we talked about this. If the next step can create something more stable, then eventually this unstable intermediate, you know, the product of the first step, can react as a reactant of the second step to give more stable product. Then eventually travel a little less, but you know it goes well. So bring a little more, and then goes well, and then bring more, and keep going. Eventually, all the reactant can go that way if that's the best one out of all the choices. So you can guess. This is good. Kind you know kind of good products when you have a strong base and no steric whatever the steric uh, definition you have to um, judge by we'll talk about that later in detail so this case strong base and also with steric if there is a steric you know the steric here or steric on you know replacing um, hydrogen with uh, something uh, like carbons that it can create steric that it doesn't have a ability of attacking carbon so rather go to the hydrogen and you come there right then instead of strong base if you have a weak base you do behave differently you don't attack first you break off first then you attack so um, if I tell you uh, the answer, this eventually can create either this or that, eventually, you know, this can create those guys. Something I said before, at this moment I have to add, whenever you form, you know, positive uh, carbon ions, they can rearrange to change the energy for the better. So if I introduce a couple um, concepts here, yes, you can choose what type of reaction you want using factors such as uh, strength of the base, and the sterics, which means how many uh, carbons you add on the you know substrate or the um, the base, uh, whether you use a strong base or weak base. You know, basically, two major factors: basicity and the steric, with the enough weak heat. Before we move on, please, please keep this in mind. You have organic compound with a, any type of base. 
you have to judge at least two. First, you have strong base or weak base. So you need to practice how to judge whether it's a strong or base. PKA value can be a good guideline. I say just good guideline. It's very helpful, but it doesn't follow exactly because of the following reason. The steric, the second factor. Because the target is not always a hydrogen. So you need to know whether you're going to attack carbon or hydrogen that's by steric so using that you can choose your attack carbon give away electron right now and push away the living group and get this one with a strong base with a no steric small simple chemicals or if you have a steric here as well as here then you cannot give electron. You want to give electron because it's a strong base, but you cannot give away electron. It's very unstable, but carbon is sterically hindered, so activation energy is really high for this type of reaction with a steric. So it goes to the hydrogen. Then the activation energy is low because there's no steric. So this happens easily on the hydrogen, not on the carbon this time. So you choose the two. Then you use a weak base. Weak base is not enough. When you use a weak base, the base is not able to attack yet. So you have to provide some energy to break them apart first. So you give heat. But even with the heat, the living group has to be decent. The carbon has to be stable. So all these requirements must be met. Then they split into this. This moment, please remember, you can attack on the carbon or the beta hydrogen to give both similar, not exactly same, similar product. I'll show you later in detail. But also this can rearrange. So at this moment, with the, you know, assuming, you know, you you um, understand and remember these types so i highly suggest you pause the video and go over again and again when you are clear come back listen to this the first thing is happening by two molecules right so it's a, they are bimolecular reaction so we use a symbol 2, bimolecular reaction. It's only one step reaction. So this step is a rate determining step that determines overall reaction. So bimolecular means the reaction rate equals to the rate constant times two reactant chemicals. So reaction order is 1 plus 1, 2, bimolecular reaction. For both of them, yes. So, you know, here you put this guy, there you put the base. Also, um, this product, organic part, you compare to the reactant part. What happened is essentially the leaving group is replaced by the base. So replacement is called the substitution. And you will see later on, but substitution can be initiated by different um, intermediates, like a radical, you know, the um, group or atom with a single electron, or like this Lewis base. So we give different name. When Lewis base attacks carbon, because it's not too big or something, sterically not hindered, then we call the Lewis base as a nucleophile. Nucleophile. So nucleophilic substitution or radical substitution depends on kind of initiator you use. 
So it's a substitution initiated by, caused by nuclear fire, and they're happening bimolecularly. Why bimolecularly? Because this guy here, they are strong and have to attack right now, and you have a good leading group. Whether you attack the carbon or hydrogen, both are bimolecular, but when you attack the carbon, immediately concerted way, okay, both are concerted initiate by attack but as you form bond you're breaking off so it's a concerted reaction you f you get the product so carbon target substitution if you target the hydrogen then you form double bond and you lose things you lose leaving group you lose the hydrogen off so the organic molecule keeps losing things and form double bond those lost the one, say hydrogen went on to the NH2, became NH3. And the leaving group lo got lost and stay alone. So they are lost. So you lost the things. So we call it elimination. So we say E2 caused by base. When you attack hydrogen, we call it base. When you attack the uh, Carbon, we call nucleophile with a symbol and nu. But what about the case with the weak base and all of these? You break off first, then you get attacked and continue. So there are many steps. In these many steps, I forgot the rearrangement, please don't forget. This can have a rearrangement. Anyhow, in all of these possible steps with a weak base, which step is the slowest step? Remember the slowest step is normally endothermic or least exothermic because of the higher activation energy. The more exothermic, the less activation energy according to the Hammond. So which step is the energy, most energy requiring step? Well, well look, at, look at the first step. The weak base doesn't do anything. We provide heat, then vibration happens, and you break this bond using that heat energy alone, right? You only break bond. No one helps but heat. So the heat energy got into the molecule, make them vigorously vibrate and break. So absorb the heat did it. So absorption of heat, meaning endothermic process. So this is a slowest rate determining step. Next step, for example, the positive charge attracts the lone pair and turn it into a sigma bond. We know sigma bond is more stable than lone pair because sigma bond is in the middle of the two atoms with more charge, right? Compared to the lone pair held by one atom. So you know that is not too bad compared to the first step. So in this rate determining step, the first step, how many atoms, sorry, the molecule is reacting? only this guy. So this is a unimolecular reaction. Unimolecular reaction. So the rate law is not like this. The rate law for the unimolecular reaction is only the reactant, right? R group with the leaving group. No base. How many base, how much you add doesn't change the rate. Here you have a uh, Lewis base and uh, the substrate by increasing any of these will end up increasing rate because you have a more chance to collide. But collision of base to the uh, reactant doesn't make the reaction happening yet, so it doesn't make it uh, bimolecular. Only this, the more you break, you need molecularly. You know, this is the main rate determining step. Whenever you form this, then it's easy, easy. So you can see. All right, so let's recognize four plus one types of reactions. So first be you know, familiar with the types, the typical types, although you have to get freestyle 
after understanding the fundamental of these 4 plus 1 type. Why 4 plus 1, not 5? You will see. So, first, you have, you know, the alpha carbon that is simple with a leaving group like a good chlorine. And you have a very simple uh, base like this. Then you know the strong base able to attack the simple carbon with a simple hydrogen on it. So strong, right away attack and breaks off. So by molecular reaction and you're replacing the Cl. So it's a substitution, right? But we know more than that. It's substitution by by molecular mechanism and you come up with the OH and if you uh, remember in previous videos the hydrogens here are you know wedged and dashed as a OH attacks those are flipping up you know remember those as well imagine the steroid chemistry and their structures when you have highly um, sterically hindered alpha carbon with the same chlorine and also you have a somewhat you know sterically uh, bulky um, base then attacking the carbon here not easy so this will choose beta hydrogen which is alpha beta hydrogen right there so one of the you know, nine hydrogens, three, 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 nine hydrogens will be attacked by this guy. Then this is a strong, will give electron right away and push electron to the stable chlorine by the, you know, arrows I showed you before. You are forming sp2 carbons flat with the two hydrogens instead of three. And then you made the chlorine leaving group and the base got the uh, conjugate acid form and uh, you know the entropy increased with the three molecule from two we talked about this and they're competing all the time but you know th this case the double bond formation is favorable because of the steric remember so what happened was elimination so we know this is elimination but in particular E2 so we have a substitution elimination by molecular. How do you make the unimolecular? Make them weak and uh, you know more to come. We talked about uh, rearrangement with a you know weak case. So let's talk about that. Let's just uh, put chlorine here, and you put the weak base. And I said you need heat then you're going to break this off and then create sp3 sp2 uh, carbon positive we call carbocation so I talked about stability of carbocation when it's this type of a carbocation we consider stable it's one of the most stable possible because this sp2 carbon with uh, positive charge first this sp2 with the more s mixed in compared to these sp3 neighboring carbons with the more p so electron like to go to the uh, you know sp2 sp3 so sp2 carbon pulls electron so electron moves to the center so these electron on the sp3 sides are stabilized by it. So the electrons are getting stabilized by losing uh, chlorine. So sp3, sp3 makes the sigma bond. Here sp2 and sp3 makes the sigma bond. So you put in more s character with the flat sp2 carbon in the center. So the electrons are overall more stable. Once that forms, you can think of the rearrangement, but we didn't do it yet. So let's just put it there so you don't forget. But then uh, from here, I said you can have this guy attacking there 
eventually you can come up with you know after a couple steps which you have to wait for it you can come up with this guy you know this part is from here somehow hydrogen is gone and chlorine is left chlorine left already in chloride form so if you see that's actually substitution but rate determining step is the first step by only this guy so overall this is SN1 right you can do E1 but I'll skip that so um, you have a substitution elimination rearrangement what type of rearrangement is possible although in this case it's not a good, good example I came up with but I'll just have to show you um, what rearrangement I mean by you can move the plus charge to the carbon charge plus charge cannot move because it's the uh, nuclei charge so what it actually moves is neighboring hydrogen like this guy the sigma electron are attracted to the positive charge so electron moves so when electron moves the nuclei of hydrogen is also attracted to the electron so they go together so that hydrogen and two pair of electron comes here that makes the carbon lose electron so it becomes positive and that's a rearrangement it's a regio isomer right regio isomers but unfortunately in this case that's not as stable so it go back to the uh, carbocation here so we say this one is a tertiary carbocation because the carbocation has a three carbons on it this one is called a primary carbocation because it has only one carbon these are not directly on this guy so only one carbon so primary so the primary carbocation stabilize only one pair of electron roughly speaking but here you have a uh, three pairs of a carbon carbon bond stabilized by sp2 carbon cation this sp2 carbon the carbocation stabilizes only this electron roughly speaking so tertiary is more stable than secondary and primary so when carbocation is stable with a tertiary and chlorine the leaving group is stable like that with the heat this can have a unimolecular reaction so that's the three types another type is this when you have double bond you can actually add HCl to it you split the molecules by some uh, mechanism and you can add hydrogen here then you can put the chlorine there and you get this so if you compare the organic molecules you can see um, this molecule gained the hydrogen and the chlorine nothing got replaced nothing got eliminated no rearrangement in this case but this could have a rearrangement rearrangement possible so overall it's just the addition so let me put here addition but addition can have rearrangement reaction so these are four types you when you build a molecule you can chop off something instead you can put something or you can just eliminate things or you rearrange things as you replace as you replace something you pull off leaving group and rearrange things and put new things on the new place not on the same carbon you know so imagine you build something you replace right on that carbon or other carbon you can replace SN2 SN1 you can eliminate things where the chlorine is E2 with a strong guy you can rearrange the charge and uh, eliminate somewhere else not originally on the carbon with the chlorine that's then uh, only possible with the unimolecular 
carbocation formation, so E1, you know, this was e SN1 I only showed you, but rearrangement makes either eliminate or substitute in different place. Or you can add to the pi bond, not only just double bond, even triple bond, you can add things. If you compare the addition to the elimination, it's kind of reverse, right? This was here and that was there. So elimination and the addition is kind of reverse reaction to each other. And there's a more complicated um, interaction between them due to the rearrangement. So that's the part of the things you spend most of the time for organic synthesis as a architect, builder. So, in order to build a molecule, you, know, you need to know how to put new things, same carbon or different carbon, or you eliminate stuff, or you add stuff, same place, different places. You know, that's all you need to do to build a new thing, right? So when you do that, uh, what reaction do you want to choose is a, ma it's a big uh, issue. So the builder must know the reaction factors and conditions to choose type of the reaction you need. So the last the type is oxidation reduction, redox. For example, you have a secondary alcohol using some uh, oxidation reagent. We'll talk about that later. You get ketone, for example. Why is it not new type? Because it's eventually elimination. You lost hydrogen, you lost uh, hydrogen there, and you form double bond. So it's a similar to the elimination. It is elimination. So reduction can be elimination. It can be even uh, substitution, even ad addition. So um, redox is unique, but it's not fundamental type. So I say 4 plus 1 type of reaction. What about combustion? What about hydrogenation? What about hydration? What about you know esterification? All of those falls into one of these four uh, fundamental type of reactions. So they are not really fundamental types. That just is different name of one of these to tell you what is the essential change or significance in terms of reaction. Okay, I hope you follow me well, and you know, good thing about video, you can go back anytime and uh, check it again and again. This is a very uh, important moment, so let me go back. If you know the type, somehow the type of reaction you want is given by someone saying, oh, I want to replace this group with this guy that's you know substitution then you know you have to ask is the new group will be on the same carbon or different carbon you know bimolecular or unimolecular right so say you got that then you have to actually run the reaction for that you need to find out what factors you want say you you decided you you are asked to do um, replacing something on the same carbon then you know you do SN2 then you say what factor you need to have for SN2 well strong and simple molecules see how the information or work you need to do request for you to know what factors plays the role to choose type of the reaction Sometimes the types and factors, just knowing them and remembering them is not enough because your change on the molecule cannot happen in one or two steps. You have to have a multiple steps. So you have to connect combinations of these multiple times 
So you actually need to build a builder's mind. So this part is moving on to the, you know, uh, a second part of the organic chemistry train. Even uh, first part, uh, end of the uh, uh, lectures, uh, I'll have to showcase what I mean by builder's mind, the architect mind, not just the knowing types and those factors. So you either know the structures you want, okay? So let me uh, let me um, summarize and, and stop. You know what structure of the product you want. Then you have to deduce reactant and what does it react with in what conditions that type of uh, deducing you need to uh, do. Sometimes you have a reactant given and the other reactant we call you know condition like a base, heat, whatever. Then do you know how to deduce the product? That's kind of easier normally. Then uh, last type is like okay I know what reactant I need to use I know what I want to build but do I know what I need to react with like a condition these are relatively easier that's a little harder but that's unfortunately is the most of the case as a real chemist so couple hint I'll tackle later but you know if this is the case, obviously you have to compare the two without knowing conditions. For example, without knowing the conditions, you compare the given reactant and product and deduce what you need. That's kind of easy, right? Or even this. Without knowing this, what do I need? So you need to know, oh, I did not attack carbon, I attacked the hydrogen. Why do I attack hydrogen? Because it's a bulky. Do I need a strong one or a weak uh, base? Well, the weak base might have a rearrangement. So does it matter? If it doesn't matter, then you can go ahead and do E1 or E2. If it is, then you have to choose carefully. We'll have a more time later on in detail. Uh, this case, if you have these two, then do you know what forms? Then you can consider factors like, oh, base, try to attack the you know carbon with the electron and you see too much steric so it's not gonna happen so let's go to the hydrogen you know that type of thinking this is a hard i want to build this what do i start with what you know what do i have you know that needs more uh, more um training especially when you have to build this in multiple steps so that's what i meant by a uh, builder's mind but that's enough for the uh, you know beginning uh, discussion. So this will be um, enough for us to move on to the uh, the actual reaction. So from next video, we'll talk about substitution, elimination, their competitions, and so on. Then uh, later we'll deal with uh, addition, with oxidation, reduction, and so on. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.